Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I want to talk about the gender deconstruction, but some basic facts about the project. We played for 72 hours. It was 72 hours that was in-game. However, that was divided into four 18-hour days, so we changed the day cycle. We made um, part of the light work was to actually light up the dome that we had built in... Uh, of course, there's no, there's no sun, so we had um, artificial sunrises and sunsets and artificial nights, 18-hour day cycles. 70 players decided that they wanted to be in this fictional space set in some alternative reality, uh, maybe science fiction, inspired by Ursula K. Le Guin, uh, on a desert planet. They played uh, two different genders, and I will talk a little bit more about that. But they weren't men and women, of course they were men and women, but that weren't the important genders. They were married, most of them. They lived in families. This is a little um, a village. It's a village uh, situation, a village uh, story. It's a story about uh, this little place celebrating a marriage. It's a story that we've heard um, over and over. They're coming together. Uh, one of the spouses is from a different neighboring village, and they're coming together to have a party. So that was the idea, but it wasn't really what the game was about, because as Johanna said when she introduced me, this was a political game. We had a political agenda, and I would say that one of the things I want to talk about is that you can actually say, I want to make a political LARP. I want to use this LARP, just as we heard that System Denmark taught people something about our reality. You can actually teach people, you can experiment, you can try this out. What if it didn't matter that I have tits and not a cock when I'm talking? What if you weren't judging my body language, assuming things because of that? But maybe it was more important to you to know whether I had blue or brown eyes to judge the things that I'm saying. We had three pre-game, three bigger pre-game seminars, I would say, that where we did a lot of deconstruction and construction of these things. Uh, we also had uh, seminars in Norway and in Denmark, where some of the players came from. The deconstruction, we used different drama exercises to try to work with body language in different ways. We constructed gender. Uh, this is a family here. Um, there were four people in each family, two men, two women. And the genders of this world was whether or not you were a morning person or evening person. And of course, <laughs> I mean, it would be silly to assume that a morning person could, could rule the world. How could they be in charge? I mean, they're not even awake when all the important meetings are. And of course, how could an evening person who's all about glamour and decoration and the external power ever take care of a family? That has to be done by a morning person. I mean, anybody who has small babies knows that. So, of course, um, we separate, we used colors. As you can see, we had the red and warm colors symbolize the evening people, and the green and blue, colder, were the morning peoples. We had different pr pronouns. It wasn't she or he, it was our or su. We changed language, we changed body language. You can see that Peter here is an evening person. And you can see that uh, his partner here is a morning person. Love. 
love was the theme that we wanted to explore. I wanted to make a, a LARP about love. You see, a lot of these stories are about violence. You, uh, Lord of the Rings, yes, in some ways, it's maybe about love, uh, but it's about the fight. And a lot of the LARPs in history is about dying. It's much more likely that your character actually dies than gets fucked, which is a little bit odd if you think about it. But to do violence, you can use huge motions. It's like, rah, rah. But love, what is love? Love is the glance across a room. That's love. It's so much more difficult to actually portray. And it's so much more scary. Because it's something that we won't cut off after the LARP. In these families, we worked in groups. Um, this guy is the child of the three others. And we worked a lot about getting that intensity. We worked with sex. Um, there's something called the Arsamandi method, which we used to simulate sex, because we didn't want people to actually have sex on the LARP, but we wanted to explore the emotions, just as you don't want people to actually die when you set up the big fight. So you use buffers. In this case, we didn't want to use buffers to have sex with, but <laughs> we used our hands. And that's the, the method, basically, this is all available in writing, is that we use our hands and arms to touch. This is the, the sensual zone. And of course, this is very gender neutral. Uh, and the important thing is that, of course, you can convey all sorts of feelings through the hands. But what is more important is that you can use your eyes. And that's what you do when you make love. You use your eyes. So you can say hello to somebody, but you can also say hello. And all of these things we explored. We did this in the concept of a very strong religion. So in this LARP, there were, there were no queers in the sense that there were no mourning people who actually fancied other mourning people, because that was the taboo. In the four people marriage, you had two sexual spouses and one friend. And then we had the priests. They were children and did not have sex at all. So what did we learn? Well, my ending sort of wish for you is that you can explore things within LARP. You can actually try out, what if I didn't have tits? What if the fact that I'm an evening person is my most important thing? And you can change the world for people by letting them out of the stereotypes that they might not even be aware that they're in. And this is what we did in Melanhimlohav. Thank you.